everybody. Matt here from Around Square. Um, Going to be a long video today. Mm. So I'm uh, powering up with a sip of tea from my uh, wonderful borosilicate gravity cup. Mm. Love that thing. All right. So going to be uh, yeah, going to be a bit of a longer one. I think I got a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, that's going to take some explanations. Uh, but I'm going to start right here with uh, these guys in my hand. This is going to be the chef's special for this month. So these are eight millimeter beads uh, and a long form setup, but it's a little different than what we currently have in the range. So uh, we have had eight millimeter long forms in our setup, in our uh, product range for a long time. These guys are a little bit different. They've got uh, uh, a three millimeter bore compared to the 3.5 millimeter bore of the originals. And they've got a double boss for the kind of a counterweight. And they've got more of a string gap because they've just got 33 beads compared to, I think, 41 maybe for the current long forms. So I'll explain these differences. So I've, I've loved the eight millimeter beads for a long time. Uh, it's been one of my main, uh, you know, my main carries, my main favorites uh, in the MK Ultra lineup. Uh, I love the way they sit on the wrist. Uh, you know, they're discreet. They don't kind of feel cumbersome, like when you're driving, when you're at the desk or whatever. I, I always have liked the long form setup because you end up with less of a tassel. You can get away with less of a tassel for getting it over your wrist because you've got that extra slack from the double loop when you pull it through, uh, put your hand through. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I like the lighter weight for flipping them around as well. They're um, they're admittedly like less of a bead counting set than the sets with bigger beads. Uh, but I do a lot of bead counting or like breathwork type stuff when I'm when I'm out and about, just like a little bit more discreet than like flipping something raucously around, right? Uh, and one of the areas where I kind of thought the older uh, eight millimeter beads could be improved was. Uh, there, there, I felt during bead counting like there was a little bit of a hot spot where the bore kind of separates from the cord. So we we tightened up the bore to three millimeters, and it makes a big difference. So now when you're when you're passing the bead with your thumb or your index finger, you don't feel the edge of the bore quite as much. Uh, the trade-off there is that they do kind of hug the cord a little bit more. So you may notice a little bit of a difference in how quickly they fall. On older cord, if the cord's getting kind of you know expanded or a little bit frayed, uh, they do kind of slow down. I've never had them actually stop on me uh, with like the old frayed Kevlar cord, but uh, you know I did notice they 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 drop less quickly, uh, which is you know depending on your preference that might even be a good thing. Uh, just kind of putting it out there. Uh, also, when you've got them on your wrist with only 33 beads, you end up with a lot more exposed cord than what you have on the traditional long form setups that we've been selling. So, you know, don't expect two wraps of bead coverage. You end up with uh, you know, cord on your wrist, which I quite like the look of, and it makes it kind of feel again less cumbersome than having so many beads. But the the real difference is in play. This is uh, why I've gravitated to this setup is because I just find it so nice to have that much cord available when I'm flipping them around. Uh, it ends up playing a lot more like Bugleri that way. Uh, and when I have the beads separated into packets, you end up with less kind of sliding around of movement of beads between the two packets. Uh, and, and so I, I really like that. Okay. So the, uh, you know, I try to be a little bit sparing in how many sets of my own stuff I take. These tie beads, I love them so much. Uh, I've recently, I had them on the yellow Kevlar. I've recently put them onto a blue set just to see how that ages. Uh, but I, I love these guys so much that I eventually had to get myself a copper set and a brass set uh, in this setup. And that's why, you know, normally we wouldn't sell something that's so close to something that's already in our existing lineup. But I felt that like between the, the bore on the beads, the number of the beads and like the double boss setup, you know, I, and how much I just like these, I figured it was worth putting it out there as a chef special. Um, we're also mixing it up a tiny bit by doing the launch on the yellow Kevlar cord, which will kind of spice things up for some of you guys. I really like the, the yellow Kevlar. I probably prefer it over the other colors, uh, but I'm going to go with the blue on my own set for now. Anyways, this is what they look like fresh out of the box. They've got the double boss, 33 beads. Uh, we've got stainless steel as well as the uh, brass, copper, and titanium. Okay. Uh, Price-wise, these guys are going to be a little bit closer to the uh, short form setup, which I think has 29 beads uh, compared to the long form. So if you like the idea of a long form set, but the price is a deterrent because those have so many beads, the cost adds up, uh, these might be a good option for you, All right? 
I think that's uh, it for that set. I'm uh, going to move on now to talking about the Milos. So, no secret, I've been a fan of the Milos since we first got our samples in. This is my own set. It's a kind of modified uh, long form set of the 10 millimeter Milos. So we uh, we have managed to like do a whole production run since last launch and restock the t titanium version of that. Uh, also love the titanium uh, Begleri, Begleri, these are the 12 millimeter beads. Yeah. So yeah, the the Thai Begleri has been also a favorite of mine. It's kind of it's a lot like the uh, Sigmas, except that I've recently kind of come back around to have enjoying preferring, in fact, the uh, two millimeter cord, the the kind of uh, 275 type cord. This is the two meter two millimeter Kevlar, uh, and you know, I really like this cord, and so I don't mind at all that it's similar to the Sigmas because it lets me use my favorite cord on like probably my favorite bead shape. All right. So the titanium version was popular enough that we decided to do some in brass and copper. I opted not to go all the way up to the 14 millimeter bead size just because that's like a pretty hefty piece of material. Uh, we go as high as the 12 millimeter, uh, 12 millimeter Milos in brass and copper. Okay. And because these are heavy, uh, with the 12 millimeter beads, we decided to go to the Mala setup, okay? So these are not uh, intended for flipping around. These are uh, breathwork, meditation, wearable kind of uh, set for you. Just a very nice, uh, comfortable bead. Again, they've got that three millimeter bore, so it hugs nice and close to the, the cord, so you're not feeling a hot spot with your thumb. Uh, I really love these guys. Uh, for, we're also doing them up in a Bugleri set. So this is towards the heavier end, uh, 12 millimeter Milos, two on each end for Begleri. I originally thought that they might be too heavy to play. I strung them up and, and started playing around with them and thought, actually, this is, you know, there we do have players out there that still like the heavier bead sets. And uh, these actually play really nicely. Uh, you know, it's more kind of towards what the uh, original Titans felt like on uh, 275. So these are on the, the two millimeter Kevlar. And, you know, if you like heavier sets, then definitely give these guys a think. Uh, we also produced the 10 millimeter beads and rather than doing uh, six beads per uh, per set like three at other end like we did with the titanium we're keeping it at two so if you like the the lighter nimbler sets uh, two copper beads at either end or two brass uh, these make a very very nice set I did a set of these up for myself in both brass and copper and I've been getting a lot of use out of them it's just one of these you know I call it a keychain set like I I like having these little sets just kind of uh, on the end of my keys or just discreetly in the pocket because they take up no pocket space. Like compare this with a, you know, a set of Delrin on the 550 cord or something. That's like all of a sudden it feels like you got something in your pocket. But with a small set like this on the the two millimeter Kevlar, it feels like nothing in the pocket and it's just uh, you know it's always there when you want to grab it, something to play. All right. Uh, I think that's it for the Milos. Oh no, it's not. So with those 10 millimeter beads. We're also doing up uh, a set of the uh, MK Ultras. Okay, so whereas the the 12 millimeter beads, we did that whoops that Mala setup uh, with the 10 millimeter beads, we went to the MK Ultras and we kept with the uh, 15 millimeter Boss bead, just because when you're flipping around something heavy like this, it's nice to have the the security of a bigger Boss just to uh, to keep them from fly from flying out of your hand, right? So you can. You can even just fl uh, play from the boss and not really have to worry about it, all right? So that's it for the uh, heavy metal Milos. We decided not to do stainless steel yet at this time. We may in the future. Uh, I love the bead shape. It's just, you know, we're, we've got so many things in our range already. We're doing a kind of a calculated paste rollout of, of new stuff these days, all right? All right, so uh, last year we launched the initial version of our premium wool vest. And I'm just kind of looking around to see if my original one is still here. I think it's upstairs. Um, but those were pocketless and it was kind of a dark turquoisey color. I uh, love that thing and I love how clean it is. I still wear that thing a ton. But one of the the big pieces of feedback that we got from customers was that people were hoping for some pockets. And so uh, in addition to adding some different colors to the range this fall, we're, we're adding a couple of different pocket designs. Uh, so the first is this one. So this is a uh, I don't know uh, if you can see it well in the video, but it's this kind of heather type color or type pattern where you see like a little bit of color variation through it. But it's a it's a reasonably like mid range gray, not super light, not super dark, but it's got like lighter fibers, darker fibers. So you could probably match it with something lighter or something darker. 
Um, same awesome material. This this wool is like super warm and comfortable. It has like enough give to it that you don't feel at all constricted. Um, buttons up. It's got like a a nice straight cut uh, to it, and like lots of great little features. Uh, the buttons have the uh, the button stay in the back, like the smaller button, so that you're not pulling the the button through the material and busting the material. Uh, the pockets we got on this side a nice kind of chest pocket. And we've got the triple pocket here to which I've added <laughs> one of my new pens we'll talk about it in a little bit. Then we got two uh, two pockets at the uh, at the hips as well. Okay, so we've got this one in uh, this color and then we've also done, we've also added another new color. So the other new color is uh, kind of a navy blue here. It's not like total navy, it's like, it's actually like kind of a dark gray, like very dark gray. Uh, navy so don't buy it expecting like navy blue exactly but that's the probably the closest I could characterize it as but it's got the same pocket configuration you can see it here laid out flat okay so again uh, I think people are gonna be really happy with this it's a nice kind of a classic pocket uh, setup uh, and you know very functional for people who want that utility all right uh, then what we've what we've also done is for people who want pockets but they don't want the, quite the the kind of slightly tactical look of like those patch pockets, we've done just uh, a simple slash pocket. Okay, so we got slash pocket version. Here's again the the navy blue, and slash pocket in this uh, in this gray heather. And these pockets are lined. Actually, yeah, these pockets are they're stitched shut just so that everything fl uh, stays flat, but you just have to use a, a, a little knife or, or something to, to get it open. But they have a, a nice lining. It's kind of a satiny lining, so it's like very comfortable. I've, I've got uh, I've claimed a uh, gray one like this for myself as well as a, uh, a navy blue one with the slash pockets uh, just because I, I like both of them and I'm a bit greedy. So there you go. All right, so next up is what we're calling the uh, everyman chore coat. So that's this guy right here. So these guys are the uh, perfect complement to our work pants and the cotton vests that we've done over the past couple of years. So this is actually like the capstone piece in uh, what's been kind of a, a multi-year project. It, actually the, the thinking behind it goes back like to be honest, a couple of decades, uh, and it's just kind of taken me this long to, to get here. But um, yeah, I'm gonna talk about the code a little bit here, and then I'll show you some of the different versions. Uh, just in real basic terms, it's got like a small small patch pocket up there, two generous patch pockets at the front. Uh, it's got a little uh, word mark at the side there, kind of discreet. It's got the uh, Mandarin collar, you call it, or like the standing collar. The sleeves are like straight cut with no um, no buttons or slash or anything. I don't know why so many brands do that sort of thing, but I um, I thought for a coat you just kind of you want it fairly clean. You can still roll up the sleeves if you need to, uh, but but yeah, that's just like a straight cut. And uh, one of the like important things, which I don't know again why so many brands do like the the sport coat or like suit jacket type cut on the sleeves, but. Uh, these this uh, this coat is cut uh, in more like a shirt, right? So that means you've got like way better range of motion through the shoulders, and so you know just like a, a lot of like little bits of utility kind of packed into this little thing. I'll show you what I mean on the shoulders. Um, this coat, like you know, originally I tried a bunch of different brands to to try and get something that was suitable, and uh, me being who I am, if I can't find something that I that I really like, that kind of like checks all the boxes for me, I'll, I'll oftentimes end up going to make it. So here's here's kind of the uh, the shape and the, the way our sleeves are cut in the shoulders, okay. This one here is a uh, uh, unnamed uh, fancy brand that I paid a bunch of money for. Uh, and you'll see how their uh, chore coat is cut. You can see the sleeves are cut like this and it's freaking terrible to try and get your arms above your head with this thing because it just bunches up. It's like, you know, it, it almost feels like it should have shoulder pads and, and whatever in there. Um, you know, a lot of the other features of this coat I like, you know, it's it's got the same kind of a straight cut cuff. 
so I, like, I, I was pumped when I was going for this. Uh, I thought it was going to be exactly what I wanted, but it ended up being just a disappointment because it was uncomfortable to wear. So anyways, I don't know. Um, your mileage will, may vary. Their brand has been around a lot longer than around Square, and they seem to be doing well for themselves, but, uh, but it's not quite what I wanted, so I made something different. And I'm going to uh, gonna show you the black version here as well. In fact, I'll, I'll throw it on just so that you can see the difference in sizing. The, the gray that I put on was the large, and the black is the large tall. So everything is just a little bit, a little bit longer. The body's a bit, the body's cut a little bit longer, and the sleeves are cut a little bit longer. Uh, this one has the red word mark on the side, which I think looks pretty sharp. And I'm pumped for it. You know, it's a, it's a project that's been in the works for a long time, and I'm happy to finally have this like three-piece mix and match, I pants, vest, and uh, and coat ensemble. Uh, I'll probably write about it in a blog post or something because there's a fair bit of history to it. But but yeah, in the meantime, get this guy out there and I hope you guys go for it. All right, uh, next we got one more garment that I want to show you before moving on. It's been a while since we've done some like straight up merch, like a, a pre-made stuff with a logo on them. And so we decided it was time. So uh, we did these actually, we did these up for the team and there's uh, something special about this logo. I haven't haven't shown this online much before, but if you look carefully, uh, it is actually a word mark. It's, uh, it's kind of a Bauhaus inspired rendition. Uh, it's got the A-R-O-U-N-D-S-Q-U-A-R-E, all kind of hidden in there in the kind of classic geometry of the Bauhaus style and the, the tricolor uh, looking pretty good, I think. And uh, one of the things that's special about this is it was done by our friend uh, and teammate Azamat, uh, that's uh, otherwise known as ZMT BLV or, or Z online. Uh, so he's like you know one of the best players in the world. Comes from Kyrgyzstan, and uh, he is like also super talented, as are like many of the guys, like multi talented. Uh, and he did this logo up just you know just uh, mucking around, and and uh, we all really liked it. So I did these up for the AO2 crew and uh, did up some extras so that I could share them with the rest of the community. So these are done on uh, Gildan, what is it, Gildan Heavy Blend. So, you know, that's like a lot of merch that you see online is that a lot of people probably have these in their wardrobe already. Uh, so you can kind of figure your sizing based on that. But yeah, it's like a nice, just like a nice standard, um, is it cotton? Cotton poly probably, uh, hoodie. And uh, yeah, just like standard, standard fit, uh, standard look with a classy new logo. Okay, probably have to do some stickers in that as well. Hey? Yeah. Okay, next up, uh, something else you've been staring at uh, for a long time and I haven't really talked about is uh, this guy here. So our titanium fountain pens are finally ready for release as are the fountain pen clips. So both of these guys have been teased a lot. The um, the fountain pen project has like, it, initially it went super easy with the aluminum and the acrylic models, uh, but then the uh, the other metals, there were like a bunch of little hiccups and we you know we wanted things to be as consistent as possible so we had to like uh, do a little bit of like back and forth with the factories uh, the copper brass stainless steel and some other materials coming later on but for this month uh, I was super happy to have the the uh, titanium version and you know talk about like not being too greedy with my own product I actually have claimed four of these guys Two of them are samples. Uh, don't don't get like uh, full of hate for me. Two of them are samples, so they weren't quite perfect. Uh, two of them are the brand new production line uh, models, and and uh, yeah, I just love them so much. And what I've ended up doing is like why I've got so many is I've I'm just like hooked on the fountain pen inks these days. So I've all got a bunch of these like Kaweco mini converters that I've put in, and I've gone crazy with the bottled ink, and I just like having a riot with like my my little notebooks and. Uh, writing stuff up, drawing like circles and arrows and, and uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole other hobby. You can see why people end up getting deep into the, the stationary product. And I've been a stationary uh, addict of sorts for, for a long, long time. And, and uh, finally happy to have the, the tools that I've designed exactly how I wanted them. And so again, they have talked before about the fountain pens. They've got the, uh, Bach 250 uh, nibs, so the Bach, the Bach nibs, super reliable, great feed and flow of the ink. Uh, 
They're cartridge compatible, but also uh, can use them with the Kaweco Mini Converter. Uh, the barrel is like just straight, which is very comfortable uh, for holding, especially if you're writing long form. Okay, push the cap and you've got a nice long thing, but it's actually designed so that you don't need to post the cap. It's uh, if you want to just like jot something down, it's comfortable enough for writing things quickly and then post, uh, putting the cap back on. But yeah, you post it for the full length writing experience, which is very nice in a pocket pen. And it's got that wide body, which, you know, if you're trained for like crimping on something tiny, uh, it might take a little bit of getting used to, but this is actually designed after the, uh, the old school uh, fatty primary pencils that like little kids in kindergarten uh, use. And it's just meant to be super comfortable and easy to hold, easy to manipulate. And uh, yeah, I, I love writing with these things. And I've heard from a few, uh, a few uh, customers as well who say like, you know, I've got terrible penmanship, but I, I just like love writing, writing stuff down with the fountain pens. You've, you've got something special here, Matt. And, and I really appreciate the feedback and uh, uh, shamelessly sharing that with the rest of you right now. Cool. As for the clips, we've got uh, same types of clips that we had for the chaos pen, the ballpoint pen. So we've got black with a word mark, black with no word mark, and natty. These are all stainless steel, which is right about like the only material that you should use for something like this. It just like, it snaps on no problem. Nice solid snap and you, you, you know, we had to do a couple of batches of samples with this to get the fit just right. But I feel very comfortable, even with my copper pen in my pocket. Uh, these, these clips aren't going anywhere. And uh, yeah, but they snap on and, and snap off. And yeah, hope you guys dig it. So as promised, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a, a long video. It turned out to be a long video. I've got one last thing here, and that is the copper chet key. So, at long last, this one again took like a few attempts to get it perfect, but holy heck is this thing beautiful, okay? So polished copper, it's uh, not gonna look like this for very long, of course. Once you start playing with it, copper's soft and it'll patina up and get all dinged and stuff, um, but that's part of the charm of the material. It's heavy. Uh, I, I actually haven't taken one of these for myself yet. I've got a copper skeletonized version and you know I've decided I can only have too many sets of Czechy. Uh, but this is my brass model. It's similar weight. The you know the the heavier ones with Chetki, traditionally Chetki are are pretty light. Uh, so the the heavier ones are a bit of a, a step out. But I, I actually quite like it. They play slow and controlled, and they have like a little bit more grip and stability than the the thinner uh, sort of the, the lighter materials. And so you know don't don't dismiss the idea of a copper Chetki uh, if you're if you're a copper lover like I know a lot of you are. Um, it's a beautiful piece and it'll age great and yeah and they they you know play they wear and here I'll just throw this on so you can see how they how they look on the wrist so you can wear it on your wrist so that you know the prices of these things are are getting up there for sure uh, if you think about it as a toy but if you think of it as a piece of jewelry then the prices are like very reasonable. And these are definitely like a classy piece of playable art, playable jewelry, okay? So yeah, uh, lots of stuff this month, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I didn't try very hard to keep it short. And uh, you know, I may do a, a quick summary to post on Instagram or something, but, but uh, yeah, launch is gonna be this coming Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific time or 6 p.m. if you've got the password from the newsletter. Newsletter is basically written. I've got the photos taken and should be going out pretty soon. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take it easy. Ha, psych. I'm back. Because there's one other thing that I forgot to talk about. Uh, last month or maybe two months ago, we uh, launched our borosilicate gravity cups. Uh, <laughs> love these things. Uh, and this, you know, as, as promised at the time, like there was going to be like a six pack coming up for cheaper. We finally got the packaging in. Uh, this one here is like a little bit beaten up, but here's what the packaging looks like. Inside, there you are. Pretty fancy schmancy. And the, the six cups will go in like that. Uh, so this month we're launching these guys in the six packs. If you want the, uh, the matching set, uh, that'll be available for you. 
And uh, while I'm here, since I had to come back and do another video, I figured I'd throw on the matching like vest and pants to go with the coat, just to show, show you guys like it does, does all kind of work together. Uh, you may or may not be the type of person that wants to have everything matchy matchy, but like check this out. Uh, I decided that since you know since this is kind of like the capstone a piece of this whole project, uh, I figured it would be a good time to go back and like reinstall the uh, the launch pricing on the pants and the vests, which we haven't had in ages. And so the the vests were like fifteen bucks at launch, which is ridiculous. The pants were 20 at launch, which again, freaking ridiculous, right? Uh, these guys here, I can't remember what I'm launching them at. It's like 35, but I I, I mathed it up like super, uh, like 65 bucks for a three-piece suit, guys. So, um, yeah, spread the spread the word. It's uh, it's not going to be for for long. It's just going to be for the launch weekend. But yeah, where else are you going to get a three-piece suit for uh, 65 bucks? And, you know, like I said, you can mix and match colors, whatever, like. Uh, I actually kind of look like